we went to Steele's Tavern Manor, which is a bed and breakfast. We made it to our destination. It's a bed and breakfast called Steele's Tavern. Steele's Tavern Manor. We have a little fireplace. Bathroom's nice. The owner redid the bathroom, I think, himself. He's done a lot of work on this recently in the past couple of years to um, update the bed and breakfast. It's an old house, originally. Say hi. I want these robes at home. So soft and squishy. We went to a brewing company. Um, it's called a nano brewery because it's so small. And um, tried some interesting coffee flavored beer. And we went to a glass blowing shop and watched this guy make ornaments and he made a little bird. And it was really fascinating. So he used a tool to um, I guess kind of crack it around the edge where it's connected to the pipe and then he would tap the pipe to make it fall off um, and then he got more glass and put it on top to make like a hook it was pretty fascinating to watch and he said that if the glass is at has had too much time to cool and the hot glass he puts on top to make the little ring would crack the rest of it. And so then he made another ornament and he put on uh, different colored glass specks on the clear glass in order so it could have different colors. And right here he is actually blowing into the pipe to blow the glass ornament open and make it round. And he rolls the um, the pole that it's on so that the ornament doesn't just like droop down and he said that if he rolls it too fast then it would it would go out like ellipt elliptical like a spaceship looking thing and then if he rolled it too slow or didn't roll it at all it would just droop down and fall off so again he makes like a crack around it or a seam around it and then he taps the pole to get it to just drop off. And you can kind of see the heat rising off of it. I think he said it was around 1200 degrees, even if after it sat out for a couple minutes. And then he puts it in, um, puts it in like a, it looks like a big cooler, but it's actually starts up at just under a thousand degrees and it sits in there for like six or eight hours and then they lower the temperature one degree at a time until everything's at room temperature because if one part that's thicker cools slower than another part the whole thing will crack another thing we went to was a grist mill where they grind corn or they used to grind corn um, and wheat to make flour and bran and wheat germ. Everything was color covered in flour because it's still used today. However, they don't actually use the big wheel to turn the stone to make flour. He actually uses an electric um, motor for that. And it's a fairly small operation. But they do actually make this water wheel spin. Um, on weekend mornings, but we were too late to see it. We are here at McCormick Farm, and it is an old mill of some type that has the big water wheel here. The stream runs and spins. This is a different one from um, the other one we were out. This is McCormick Farm. So I'm going to film a little bit of this, and my husband said he's going to go read a sign so he knows something about it to tell us. It's really pretty. The old stones 
in the stream. Quite picturesque. I know what this is. This is a um, grinding stone. They take the corn, and this would be in the mill, and it would turn, and um, it would grind down the corn into flour and bran and that stuff. It's not running today. I don't know if they make it spin or not. They made a little canal. It seems very fancy. It says Walnut Grove where Cirrus Hall McCormick invented and in 18... 31 demonstrated the first successful reaper to introduce the era of farm mechanization and this is dedicated as a historic landmark of agricultural engineering. That says blacksmith shop in which the first practical reaper was built by Sears McCormick in some big wooden gears here. This out here is the water wheel that would spin. So that would spin that big gear. Which of course would turn this thing, that thing, these gears, and I believe above us would be um, where the corn and flour would be. Oh, here we go. Grist mill diagram. So I'm down here, that's the water wheel, and so it would turn the stone, like the one I showed you outside, right here, and that's like the grain coming in, being ground, and then your flour and stuff coming out there, which that little thing is where the flour would come out, or the ground corn. There's the grinding stone. I'm gonna save that one on top of it and that's where they grind them together. How does that work exactly? That applies pressure to it. Mm -hmm. And that's spun by the water wheel, right? All those gears downstairs. So McCormick Farm, McCormick is the first one who developed something called the reaper, which reaps the harvest, like the wheat or hay out of the field. Um, before that, I guess it was all done purely by hand. And so these machines would actually like gather it up onto that big flat area um, so that they didn't have to bend down and pick it all up by hand. And of course it was pulled by a horses. Um, and so he got a lot of notoriety for this because it made such a big difference in the farming world.